and welcome to the 2021 Milwaukee Film Festival presented by Associated Bank. I'm Marielle Alschwang, the Education Manager at Milwaukee Film, and I just want to thank everyone who's uh, tuning in live um, for your patience. Um, yeah, we had a, a little bit of some technical difficulties today, um, so thank you for sticking around. And if you're tuning in after the fact, thank you so much for watching this because um, I'm really excited about this group of uh, films and filmmakers uh, in our Milwaukee Youth Show this year. So, um, and oh gosh, let me get back to my housekeeping notes. What a flurry of activity it's been already. <laughs> um, so this is, an afternoon nightcap style presentation, I suppose. Um, the nightcap is presented by the Yubuki Family Foundation. Um, and I just want to remind everyone that we are still accepting votes for the Ellen H. Budd and Suzanne L. Selig Award. So please don't forget to cast your vote. To do that, visit the short film or shorts program page at watch dot mkefilm.org, log in with your pass or ticket code and click the button that says vote now. And you'll be connected to the form that serves as your ballot. Uh, and the, this year the voting closes at 11.59 p.m. on May 19th and our awards will be announced live at a virtual ceremony on closing night of the festival at 7 p.m. So tune in and see if your favorites win. As you've seen, we have a double up challenge happening. Uh, we've already hit our original target of $50,000. So thank you, thank you so much uh, for those who've already sent your support. Uh, but Susan and Bob Mikule have generously raised their offer, taking our goal to $75,000 to raise by the end of the festival. So text double up to 44321 or go to mkefilm.org slash donate to donate. You can also go to mkefilm.org slash members to become a member and help us meet our goal. Um, we have just about $53,000 now. So thank you so much to all who helped us get to that $50,000 goal again. And of course, to Susan and Bob. Milwaukee Film couldn't do what we do during the festival and throughout the year without the support of our members. Members get access to free films throughout the year, discounts on tickets, passes, and more. Plus, our members keep the nonprofit Milwaukee Film going. If you think that sounds appealing, please join us. And if you're already a member, thank you and help us spread the word. So, Today, we are joined by filmmakers from the Milwaukee Youth Show. Um, there are about 11 of them joining us today, so I won't list all the names here, but you will definitely want to stick around for these conversations. The Milwaukee Youth Show 2021 is so incredible. Um, watching these films uh, was really a thrill, and I think it really speaks to so many, just the myriad experiences that uh, many of us, most of us, all of us, I suppose I can't speak for you, but uh, many of us have shared uh, throughout 2020 and, and beyond. We're still kind of just emerging from that in some ways. Um, but yeah, these are young filmmakers who are working with what they've got and who they've got to create really in just creative, surreal, um, genuine, sincere, challenging, thought-provoking work. So if you have not uh, gone and watched those, watched those films, please go to uh, the Milwaukee Youth Show. Um, that'll be under the Cream City Cinema category um, in the Milwaukee Film Festival 2021. So without further ado, I would love to bring on uh, my first guests, Georgia Fritch and Maddie O'Connell. Welcome. 
So yes, hi, uh, hi Georgia, hi Maddie. Um, since some, since we're kind of rolling through a lot of different interviews, I would love if you could give us uh, your name and your school if you're comfortable with that, or maybe your filmmaking program if you prefer, and just like a really brief, like one sentence uh, synopsis of your film, just as a refresher for those tuning in. Um, hi, I'm Georgia Fritch. I go to Martin Luther High School. I'm a senior. Um, and if I were to describe my film in one word, it would be experimental. Hey, I'm Maddie O'Connell. I go to Shorewood High School. Um, I made Crimson and Lilacs. And if I were to put my film in a one, into one word, um, it would be anxiety. Mm, interesting. Okay. Yeah, that's an interesting word because, uh, yeah, Georgia's film is called Sanity. Um, you're both definitely approaching, um, yeah, some personal and political experiences of 2020 and with sort of a, a an experimental artistic lens. Um, I would love for you both to talk about um, the production and sort of visual aspects of, of your work and how, uh, you know, what personal motivations drove you to that aesthetic. So Georgia, if, if you could speak first on that. Okay, so my film, I started to make it for my AP art class as just an experiment. Um, I've done, actually Maddie and I were in the Milwaukee Film Teen Course earlier in 2020 in March. Um, and so after that happened, like I've always just been interested in film and just like experimenting. And so I made the piece to kind of show how 2020, the year, just with everything going on, how that damages, like how that damaged my mental health and how like doing virtual school just that was representation for everything that happened and how it kind of had like stressed me out. And that's pretty much what that was. Thank you. And um, just a quick follow up um, in the film, you're seeing kind of peeling back these layers. Do you feel that um, the experiences of the past year have revealed different aspects of yourself to you or yeah, I'd love to hear a little more about that. Right, so I, I think that 2020 definitely did change me. Um, I'm a lot more, I see people in a lot more like humanistic way and things in a lot, in a more humanistic way. Um, there was a lot of negative, just really hard things that we as like teenagers and like young people had to go through but I think that that just towards the end of the film, when I said I'm looking forward to those changes and I have the eye just kind of looking out, it also it also means not only like, am I looking forward to what happens? It's just like, I'm literally just like open to whatever's going to happen because I think that we can't go back to how things were before everything happened. So it's like, we have to kind of find this new way to do things. Thank you. Yeah, and Maddie, what are your thoughts? Um, so talk about like the production stuff. Mm -hmm, yeah, and the, your overall aesthetic, which is very unique and and yeah, experimental. Yeah, so um, the, since it happened since um, the beginning of COVID, it happened in spring. I kind of wanted to like this. Actually, started with a poem that I wrote. Um, it was just a poem that I I just came home one day I. And I just wrote this poem, um, and this poem kind of has to deal with some of the past events regarding George Floyd, um, the murder of George Floyd. And since that really hit me really hard, I figured the best way for me to deal with that was to express myself through art. Um, and so I wrote this poem, and I was also at the time taking part in the uh, Milwaukee High School film course. And I needed something for my end film. So 
I made this film about sort of the feelings that I was feeling then to kind of help me cope a little bit um, during that difficult time. And I was just thinking, it's interesting that you have this, you have this, um, you have this contrast between, you know, it's springtime, you know, it's starting to get kind of nice outside. Um, and you have this, this, these horrible events that are happening um, around us. And so it's kind of like contrasting the beauty and the horror that's happening all around us and how you kind of want to just kind of cower away from all that. And yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and I'm curious for both of you, how are you coping with this experience now? It's still kind of ongoing. Has much changed for you? Um, are you still feeling able to sustain kind of a creative output or yeah, how's it going now? For me, around February earlier this year, I started to have a really like intense art block where I just didn't know because I'm in AP art and the film was also for AP art. So after um, the Capitol riots around that time, I just didn't have any more motivation to really do a lot of like work. And so now that my, the school year is ending out or that it's closed, it's coming to a close, I feel kind of like, I don't know what the new, like my next steps are gonna be for sure, but I know that, like I know where I'm going to college and I feel, but as far as like a major and a minor, I, I'm not sure. Um, I think I'm just gonna go in and see what happens. Um, so I think that right now, at least for me, I'm just like finding my way around, like just being open to anything and to whatever happens. Awesome. Um, for me, I been kind of having a similar situation. Um, I, I, before, like during quarantine, I did a lot of drawing. Um, I did a lot of drawing and editing, but, um, I've just been toward, since the towards the end of the year, I've been getting very anxious again. And, um, I suffer from anxiety, so it's kind of hard for me to focus on things. But I do feel like that I do feel that working on art does kind of help me kind of stay focused. But I do encounter that art block as well. Um, it is a little bit difficult to try and deal with these situations and, you know, keep an open mind for inspiration. Uh, I have been making political art um, that I'm planning on turning into animation or something like that later. Yeah, I, I really appreciate you both being candid about that. And I think a lot of people viewing will be able to relate to those, that sort of those waves of feelings. Um, and yeah, I, I'm just, I find it really remarkable how you've both managed to make something experimental and emblematic, but also, you know, really personal and really universal. Um, that's really special. And I just think you're both incredible artists and um, whatever you choose to do in the future, you know, I'm sure it will be creative. I, while we're talking about that, I, I have seen kind of like, you know, different orgs in town that you're involved in and, and different mentors and stuff like that, which is hugely important and, and sustaining too. Um, yeah. Do you have any words about sort of um, community support or mentorship from other artists, um, you know, in the process of making these films? Um, so you can go. You're good. <laughs> um, yeah, so a lot of my inspiration that I took was mostly just, it was mostly from um, a lot of experimental artists and just like the use of filters, I actually got... Um, that it, I actually got that from um, Funny Face because they did they used a lot of these um, red filters, and so I kind of wanted to make it um, a little bit surreal and it kind of make you feel a little uneasy. 
and I wanted it, I actually specifically wanted it to feel unnatural. Um, so I took a lot of inspiration from Funny Face and a lot of like French films, um, as well as for my friend Zani, who also makes, uh, he takes a lot of like really experimental photographs. Um, but yeah, those are the two people I really get a lot of inspiration from for this film. That is awesome. Cool. Um, for me, I guess when you were talking about the support of, you said the support of artists, like how is how have they supported you in this time? Um, I think um, my art teacher has been a really, I'm actually in the art room right now. There's nobody in here. So um, my art teacher is a, an inspiration. He's just been kind of pushing me throughout the year. And when I, I told him that, about like making this and he actually there's a piece I got into making pieces with like a newspaper background and then I would paint acrylic over it and so then he was like what if you just tear like the pieces what if you tear the painting up and I said okay um so I'll take a video of it and then that's really where that idea came from so he's been just in general not just with the film but also throughout this year um he's someone that I really just kind of like trusted and leaned on and been like, what do you think of this piece? And how can I improve this in the midst of protests and racial injustice with like Asian hate and Black Lives Matter and just all of these things coming together. That's, he's really been someone who I've, who I've like leaned on for support. Aww. That's so lovely to hear. Thank you for sharing that too. And yeah, speaking of art, I love seeing all the art in the background <laughs> right now. You're in the world, that's that's great. Um, and may it continue and, and may your artwork keep thriving and, and sustain you and in the process, yeah, kind of continue to give us a, a touchstone to um, relate to and, and get some catharsis from. So. Thank you so very much, Georgia and Maddie, for joining our conversation and for your film, Sanity and Crimson and Lilacs. So beautiful, well done. Thank you for having us. It's our honor. See you around. Bye. <laughs> Bye. And uh, let's see, next on the docket, we have Cohen and Dara, I believe. Hello, hello. Um, Hello. <laughs> good to see you both. Welcome. Um, and yeah, if you could please, we're, I'm kind of going to go through these like refresh, like one sentence refreshers of what the, what your films are, like a little synopsis for just to jog viewers memories. But yeah, Dara and Colin, if you could um, tell us your school or program, if you're comfortable with that. Um, uh, or generally where in Milwaukee you're calling us from, and um, yeah, short, snappy description of your film. Dara, you can go ahead. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dara. I go to Nicolay High School in Glendale, and my short is an experimental piece. There's no dialogue. It's just uh, footage in a fisheye lens to some distorted music to kind of show how the pandemic has altered normal life. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that one's called Distance and Cohen, Isolation. Um, yeah, I go to Ronald Reagan High School and uh, my short film Isolation is about um, a man who lives alone during the pandemic and he misses his family pretty much that's the main plot. Yeah, um, thank you so much. And I saw some uh, overlaps, I guess, or sort of thematic ties between both of your films. Um, they both have experimental aspects to them. Um, a, you, you know, you're using music in a unique way. It's a narrative, but there's also like, I, in, in, at different levels, sort of a surreal, aspect to it. Um, yeah, I would love to hear where you got the, I, the motivation to focus on these narratives in particular. 
Um, and what was it like um, working with friends or family members during a pandemic? Um, Dara, you can go first if you like. So uh, let's see, I got a fisheye lens and like any other, I feel like teenager, I wanted to like take a bunch of photos with it, take some videos, and then it kind of snowballed into like a cohesive film and then concept. And then I was like, wait a minute, what can I do with this to kind of show like the distorted pandemic life? And so that was kind of how the idea started. And then uh, this was really, like pretty much a solo project. I didn't really have anybody else working on it with me, minus like my friends who I asked to be in it. So this was kind of a spontaneous uh, me project, I would say. Um, for mine, <clears throat> it would say it was for a school project. We were just supposed to make a film pretty much. And I wanted to make one about the pandemic and how it can affect people because I wasn't, you know, the pandemic's not very fun and I hadn't been having a very nice time. So I sort of just wanted to portray that sort of through a character. And then um, uh, I guess it was nice. I worked with my grandpa to film with it. He was my actor. And I also worked with a couple of family members like my mom and my sister and my grandma as actors. But I did all the... Uh, I mean, like I did the other stuff, they were the actors, I appreciate that. Yeah, and it, your film is so gorgeous, and your grandfather is an incredible actor. Is is he an actor? I guess you could say so now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he did a really beautiful job, and um, I got to see another one of Cohen's films, and uh, his grandfather is in that one too, and it's, it's beautiful. Um, so yeah, you created the music for your film, right, Colin? Yeah. Um, do you make music a lot? Um, not. I mean, not a whole lot. Just every so often. Recently, it's just been only for if I want to make a film, I just make some music for it. Okay, nice. Um, well, it's got a very evocative. Both of you have very evocative soundtracks. Um, yeah. What is it like to? I guess in your case, Dara, you're directing, did you direct the musician or did you find music um, that someone else had already made? Yes, I relied on uh, bensounds.com, <laughs> royalty free music. And actually I had some like really great music by like, I think his name was like Mort Garrison, made some like really cool synthy stuff. But then I ran into, I originally submitted it to the Scholastic Art and Writing Competition, but then I ran into some plagiarism issues. I told my art teacher, I have this song, but I don't think I can reach out to the guy if I can use it. And so I had to find something that'll convey the mood that I'm going for. And I was like, oh, royalty-free music can be such a miss sometimes. But this one, Ben Sounds, his like weird alien music, it was good. <laughs> yeah, it worked for sure. Um, I'm not sure what the word is for this, but you know, maybe tactility or um, you know, kinesthetic awareness or something. Like both of your films have an interesting relationship with specific objects and place. And I mean, Dara, you're literally using the term distance and Cohen, you're talking about isolation, but there seems to be, you know, this theme of, you know, distance, but also like specifically focusing on like a clock or a, a phone, a cell phone, a telephone, a lap, like, um, yeah, how did you, um, kind of pick the these pieces um, that are part of your production? Um, why did certain objects stand out to you? Was it kind of purely aesthetic or was it more narrative? 
um, because it seems very focused. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear more about that. I don't know if that's a sort of vague question. <laughs> um, for, should I go? Go ahead, yeah. Okay, um, for me, um, I, I'm not sure if I like, I don't think I had it like planned out. Like I didn't have a, like I did like a script and all that, but I didn't have a very precise plan of what I wanted to do. But um, I know I focused on a few different things for it. Um, I think this mostly just to kind of get the point across most of the time. Like I think I focused on like a bowl or a few things like for breakfast. Mm -hmm. I sort of just like mainly wanted to convey the sort of theme of how things started to get to the same a whole lot throughout the pandemic where you go throughout the same procedure every day and it just starts to get old really quick. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I, I love about filmmaking is that someone will like tell me something or point something out and be like, oh, I never thought of that. I am very like random. I don't really think about stuff too much, but then I feel like the person watching be like, oh, that was such a deep and meaningful choice. And I'm like, oh. Thanks. I don't know. I doesn't. What am I trying to say? It's it's kind of random. I wanted to focus on those phones because it was like funny. Because I don't know why we have like a rotary and like a digital landline like next to each other, and it was also kind of to show that you need to communicate with like your friends and family during the pandemic. I focused on some of the art I was working on because that's how I've been spending some of like my idle time so i think i answered your question yeah totally yeah yeah just getting sort of inspired by the what's tactile to you in a way um and fascinating in itself is kind of that's kind of cool to put into a film too yeah um so wow i was thinking about rotary phones and i just is this like the the pandemic era space out where you just, sorry, <laughs> I was musing on rotary phones. Uh, we have one at home that's like, you take the thing and put it <laughs> on your ear. Okay, um, cool. So yeah, my question would be, uh, how long have both of you been filmmaking? And do you plan to continue with this medium? Um, I, I guess I've been filmmaking for like just a year or so. I didn't really actually start to try to do anything until I, uh, got film class. That's sort of like the main gateway into filmmaking for me. Um, I did a bit of that last year, but it didn't work out very nicely. And then this year it worked out a lot better, but, um, that's, that's how that worked out. Um, and uh, I suppose I would like to continue filmmaking. I, I quite enjoy it. Yeah. I'm surprised yeah. you've only been filmmaking for a year. That's very impressive. That's awesome. I've watched a lot of movies. Yeah, totally. Yeah. OK. Like, uh, sorry, Dara. Like, which would you say has inspired your film the most? I'm not sure. Um, I had. I don't know if I could say. I, I don't really know. Like, I've, I, like there was other things that, like for other films that I made that had a more direct inspiration, but for this one, it was kind of just about the pandemic was my main, what I wanted to do. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. And yeah, Dara, how long have you been doing this? Do you plan to in the future? What films inspired your film as well? <laughs> So I relate to Cohen because I I started off as like a movie watcher more so than a filmmaker. And I very new as well. Like 2019, I really dived in to like watching as many films as I could. And then I started off by making like little music videos. And then sometimes I'd make funny like skits with my friends and then this was actually low-key my first like film that I've done anything with that I've 
like taken pretty seriously and submitted it to youth shows and art competitions. And uh, I don't think like any like films have inspired me with this one. It's more like what's going on in my brain, but I am working on a film right now and I'm like writing my first screenplay and I'd say that one has a lot of influence from the movie Daisies from the 60s, like the Czech new wave. So I think, yeah, I have a lot of influence from that film right now. I could totally see you going in a new wave direction. Yes, yes. Well, this is really exciting to hear. I loved hearing about you, how you made these films, but I'm also really impressed and thrilled that you're kind of in this very emergent stage of your craft. Um, and yeah, I'm just so thrilled that I, I think, I hope that you'll keep making films and that we'll see more and more from both of you. Um, I love where your intuition is at and, and your thinking. So yeah, you both made really beautiful films. Again, Cohen Kriofsky Manella, Isolation and Dara Carnival Distance. Excellent work. Um, thank you so much for being a part of this Milwaukee Youth Show and this chat. Thank you so much, Mario. Thank you. See ya. Okay, that was delightful yet again, and I'm thrilled to bring on um, my next guests. Um, we have Nicholas and Kayla. Hello. Hello. How's it going? It's going good. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey. So, where are you? I guess you could say what school, you don't have to be at school. Oh yeah, and Clayton's here, yes. Okay, cool. No. Hey Clayton, all right, we're all here. Um, yeah, if you could uh, tell us, you know, the school or area of Milwaukee that you're calling from uh, and kind of a brief synopsis of your, of your film. Or if you could describe it in one word, I really liked how that went too. Kayla, we can start with you. Okay, sounds good. So I'm attending the Milwaukee Institute of Foreign Design and my film was about two little creatures crossing the desert to visit their guardian, which was like the giant wolf creature. And upon their arrival, they realize it's time for their guardian to pass on. So they send it up to the stars. Thank you. Um, and Nicholas, we can go to you with impermanence. Uh, I'm from uh, Franklin High School. I did my film there. And I, mine is just a stop motion anima animation about the earth, I would say. <laughs> yeah. about, about us. <laughs> I love that description. Yeah. Yes. And Clayton. Um, I go to Ronald Reagan High School, and my film is just like, I tried to make it like a Lord of the Ringsy type uh, opening uh, that tries to teleport you into an, like a medieval world, fantasy world. So. And it's about a card game that goes bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, it goes some places for sure. And that one's called Dangerous Days. Dangerous Days, I forgot to say. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's okay. You don't have to. I'm giving you like these prompts that I I just made up uh, 20 minutes ago. So thank you for obliging with these um, like pop quizzes, I guess. Um, so for those tuning in, who may not already know, um, all three of these filmmakers used animation um, to get different, very different effects and, and send, um, you know, different messages, although you both um, kind of touch on the theme of, you know, having a natural setting or sort of these sort of these other other worlds um, or even other potentials of how to exist in this world, which I thought was really fascinating. Um, uh, yeah, so maybe on that point, um, let's talk about, you know, where you got your stories from or wh yeah, what inspired your films in the first place. Nicholas, do you wanna go first? Uh, sure, uh, mine was 
this was just a project we did for my video production class. And she had show, uh, my teacher had showed us a bunch of films. And as soon as she saw me, she said, you know, Nicholas, he'll, he'll be thinking how to make one better. And that's what I did. I was just thinking, what do I want to do? What do I want to talk about in my film? And that idea, I've done something similar before, like having stop motion with like stuff on the floor. And that idea just came to me and I, I just rolled with it. <laughs> Um, I also, I love how you credited uh, your friend who was cleaning up, like <laughs> <laughs> definitely an important note to put at the end of uh, something that has an environmental theme, like help cleaning up, very important. So <laughs> we appreciated that. Um, yeah, Kayla, could you tell us about where you got your story from? Um, I came up with my story during my animation pre-college course. And it was for my final, and I was really inspired by the games Okami and Journey while making it. So awesome. And um, do you usually work in the medium of 2D animation? Um, and are you still doing that? I kind of like dabble with everything. I mostly do like 2D and like stop motion. Um, I know for school, I just did a stop motion. I don't have any new ideas right now, but like I still want to keep doing it. Nice. Um, okay. Um, so I was inspired by my favorite movie is Blade Runner, and the working title for that was Dangerous Days. So I really like the name, and I'm, I I like the movie. So that's where I got my title, and um, I thought it fit my um, what I was going for. And then, really, if you've seen my film, it's like a mixture of Grimm's fairy tales, Lord of the Rings. Um, just, um, I, I took inspiration from the song, uh, the, it was a Bob Dylan song, but then uh, Jimi Hendrix did it. It was all along the watchtower and I liked the lyrics, like the Joker and the thief. So I kind of um, like, have you seen the, have you seen the film? It's like Elliot, the bird person is like both a Joker and the thief. And I just like the, the aesthetic of it. It's kind of like a folk song, folk tale kind of. Hey, can I ask Clayton a question? Yeah. Uh, your thing, mine was like something I did in my own in my basement. Yours looked like a full on production. Yeah. You got a bunch of people. How, how did yeah. that go? Um, well, I go to a, uh, like a, it was, it's a Milwaukee Visionaries project. It's a really great after school uh, film. Uh, program basically um, and we there's a bunch of students there that uh, are working um, on films so I had a lot of help I had a lot of like uh, Mike Driscoll helped me a lot um, with the editing Kevin um, helped me with the sound a lot Kim Kozier was my uh, helped a lot with the um, with like the sets and the helping me with the puppets but it was it was like more than a year of work, uh, yeah. like three years. But it was definitely worth it. And if once if you go to college for it, you'll have like um, if you continue, it's like when you start collaborating with people who are interested in the same like different aspects. It's great. It's very eye opening. I guess yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But um, I had a lot of help. Um, but it was my idea but they helped me persevere, really. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks for asking that question, Nicholas. I, I love this um, round table that this is turning into. Does anyone else have any questions for one another? Uh, I want to ask Kayla. <laughs> sure, I can ask somebody. <laughs> your, your, uh, if I remember, your piece was about the people like in the snow and they find they find like the big the big the big wolf and the wolf turns into like a like a star yes right yeah i want to know i want to know the symbolism you have there well i mean like kind of recently um like my dog had passed away so i kind of took some inspiration from that yeah but yeah that's mainly the thing and then, like I said before, like I really like um, the style of the games Okami and Journey. 
and I just wanted to kind of like put together this like whimsical animation. That's great. Yeah, I I think I know the what you're talking about. Yeah, and those games are really very nice looking. <laughs> I think I see a collab happening. I feel like there should be a collaboration between Kayla, Clayton, and Nicholas. <laughs> sure. Okay, cool. Let's see it. Let's see what we're talking about. Show. The dog that went to a fairy tale, and then the the earth. Then they polluted the earth, so then he died. <laughs> I'm seeing some Okami love in the in the chat here as well. Um, <laughs> Yeah, this is great. And also, Nicholas, I'm, I think I'm going to just keep you as my co-host for the rest of the show, if that's OK. That's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. Um, I would like to reprise a question I posed at the very beginning of, um, of this Q&A, which has to do with, um, you know, how your, how your waves of creative energy or fatigue, how that has gone, you know, are you able to, um, yeah, stay creative or kind of come up with ideas? I know Clayton, you're just coming out of, you know, a, hu a huge project, um, you know, a multi-year project and Kayla, you're in college and Nicholas, you're my new co-host for this show. So you might, you know, have like a multi, Multi many hats to wear in the near future. But yeah, tell me about how that's going and, and where you're at now um, creatively. Um, so, um, so could you phrase the question again? I'm sorry, I was thinking about my film. I'm trying to, okay, phrase the question again, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I guess just to like also really compact it. Uh, what's next for all of you? What are you working on now? Are you are you feeling like working on a new project or just seeing what comes next? Oh, for um, me, uh, I can go. For me, like I think creativity takes time and work. It's not something you just come up with. You have to like be forced to like do something. So at any time, uh, there's something like a. I need to do a school project I'm doing right now where I have to do uh, a music video. And for that, I just started thinking, what is the craziest things I can do? And just went through all these things and came up. And that's how I just came up with ideas for it. Nice. Are you going to continue on the sort of environmental theme bent or do? Oh, uh, no, no. Uh, this, is just, this is just a fun project. It's not yeah. anything. Nice. It's more, or I, I, right before that, I did another one where it's a script that someone wrote in my school. It was about uh, uh, losing someone, losing someone you love. So it was kind of that one was kind of serious. So now I'm going like, let me do mm -hmm. something simple. <laughs> I just wanna, yeah. yeah. How about you, Kayla? Um, for me, I mean, like finishing my first year of college, there was a lot of creativity going on and like it kind of sucked though because we didn't have in-person classes so there's a lot of like making stuff in the dorm and it was kind of hard sometimes because it was like the same environment but I kind of just kept pushing and I put all my effort into all my projects and now being out of school I have like one project lined up and I'm working on a concert based like carol card deck so that's my focus right now. Oh, it sounds like that'll be gorgeous. Yeah. Maybe this tarot deck will be featured in your collaborative film with Clayton and Nicholas. <laughs> that would work. <laughs> nice. um, okay. Um, so for my future, I am going to UWM uh, for film. And I'm going to see like animation, directing, anything or just anything with art because I love to create stuff and I don't see me doing anything else for money besides art or, you know, as a career. Um, and then for the future of my project, um, this is just like the first chapter. Uh, this is five pages of my script, which is like 30 pages. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I have plans to continue this story if you like it. 
stay continued. <laughs> yes, we yeah. will. Yeah. yeah, I felt like a, it was like a part one of the yeah. story. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. And I'm so excited to hear that we'll be seeing parts parts two and three coming up. And Clayton, you're like kind of a Milwaukee Youth Show vet. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if uh, anybody else tuning in has gone to Milwaukee Youth Shows before, but I remember my first year working at Milwaukee Film. Um, what our, my first experience of the Milwaukee Youth Show had a film of uh, short claymation uh, animations that you'd made at, in, mm -hmm. at, during what ages, Clayton? <sighs> I don't remember. It was so long ago, but I would like, it's like, I made one at Thanksgiving one year when I was like 12 or something, um, or younger. I was just messing around with my iPad and just making little claymations, making the, um, I was just having fun with it. I wasn't really thinking of like what the story was. I was just having fun, which really got me interested and got me joined, which got me making more advanced puppets, but they were really just lumps of clay or, at the start, which really started me off. But yeah, that that was. I want to have more fun and not for my next couple movies. I want to go back to like not stressing over it and just have fun for one uh, for a couple more movies before you know get actually professional quality. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's been so cool to see how your work has developed from that into this three part you know, scripted, yeah. really detailed uh, series. But at the yeah. same time, you know, it's just a testament to the artist's uh, ability. And I'm speaking for all of you who are in a restream right now on our in our talk, you know, this ability to give life and meaning to the, you know, things that are seemingly mundane or to your drawings and, and things that um, inspire you. So yeah, once again, I loved all of these films. Um, it means a lot that you're in our youth show this year. And I can't wait for the tarot deck. I can't wait for your films, Nicholas, to see it. You know, what other themes you're going to have in your bonkers music video. And I can't wait mm -hmm. for your next films, Clayton. And for the collab. I'm very for this collab. Mm -hmm. But, you know, do what thou wilt with <laughs> my support. <laughs> Um, but yeah, thank you so much again. This has been a lovely conversation. Uh, and uh, yeah, Nicholas, if you want to stick around, uh, you're welcome to otherwise. How so much homework? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, this has been a delight. Best of luck to all of you. Can't wait to see more of your work. And next we have, oh, a wonderful trio. We have Colin, Tommy, and Francis. Yes. More favorite. Oh, boy. <laughs> Great. This is really cool. Um, so, yes, you may know the drill by now, but I would love to go around and just do a quick refresher of, yeah, where you're calling from or what school uh, you're affiliated with, um, what your film is, and, and a brief possibly one word if you've got if you've got something um description of your film just to refresh everybody's memory yeah so um my name is tommy and i go to greendale high school and my film uh was called if you need me and it's about um a teenage girl dealing with the disappearance of her sister and um how she kind of feels responsible for it and so i wanted to highlight kind of the emotion that she was going through um, and how that was reflected in her relationship with her best friend. Thanks. All right. Uh, my name is Francis. My film is titled How I Write Stories, and it's basically a, it's an informational film that uh, basically outlines how I tell stories in a prose format. And yeah, that's about it. It's, I mean, I guess it's animated, kind of. I don't know. It's got pictures. Uh, thank <laughs> you, Mike. Yeah, it's multimedia. Some an there's an animated you and a live live action other stuff. And there's yeah. one live action thing, and that's a chair that I stole off of Google Images. <laughs> uh, yeah, 
that's that's really i mean i guess i made it in like two days and i had i did it for an assignment i had to uh i was like falling behind on this assignment i was like shoot i gotta do something so it made that and then submitted the film into the film festival for like shits and giggles you know and it somehow got in <laughs> uh, boy yeah uh, yeah it's like when people write a hit song in five minutes or something right yeah yeah <laughs> sure one of those. no but yeah it's so charming and and uh insightful so thank you Got my freaking baby voice in there too so that's fine <laughs> uh, yeah all right well, anyway <laughs> <laughs> all right oh. and colin all right i'm colin uh i go to nicolay high school and my film the service is about this guy who is subscribed to a postal service that delivers your package before you think to order it so kind of weird delightfully weird that's like um, some dystopian stuff there. I love it. Indeed. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think this is a really cool kind of roundtable on writing in a way. I mean, Francis, it's like I could see some of uh, what Francis's uh, narrative is about, this kind of like meta narrative, like in a character, like in Tommy's film, where Tommy, you know, you have a character who's processing grief. Um, partly through writing, but you also created, you know, this beautiful and very emotional narrative, you know, in itself. It's a live action narrative uh, film um, with, you know, a really amazing cast and a whole soundtrack. Like, it's a whole production and, and, and you, Colin, as well, um, have yeah, just so much characterization. Um, and it is, yeah, definitely surreal. And again, quite the production. So I feel like I'm in the midst of some really brilliant writers and people who could pr probably wax philosophical on, you know, <laughs> what your writing process was, you know, what where you get your inspiration. I'm not even sure where to start. But um, so I guess we could just start with starting and and uh, I would love to go around and just hear um, why you chose these stories. Um, and then we can get into the writing process too. But yeah, Tommy, do you want to go first? Yeah, of course. So um, I actually had the idea for the kind of final consequential scene in my film. Um, I had the idea for it about three years ago. Um, and I had never really known how I was going to get to that point with this story. And so it was that scene was always in my head and I was kind of like, how do I build a story around this scene? Um, and so I finally sat down to write it and my writing process is just kind of like, I have to force myself to really sit down and say, okay, I need to knock out a page or a couple scenes worth. And so I finally steeled myself for that process and sat down and was like, all right, I'm going to build a story around this scene where um, my main character, Leah, is contemplating whether or not to commit suicide um, based on the feeling of responsibility for the loss of her sister. And so it was really, it was really interesting to have the final scene in my film done and like I knew what I, I knew exactly how I wanted it to look before and so that was kind of unique and something that I enjoyed doing um rather than just going from start to finish so hmm. was this inspired by um you know as much as you are comfortable sharing you know was this inspired by anything personal for you no it was not um I, the inspiration for it, I, I really came up with the idea. I was, I was sitting uh, at church one weekend and I was kind of dozing off and I was like, hey, this is a really cool scene idea. Mm -hmm. And so it was just, it, it wasn't really inspired by, by anything personal. It was, it was really just, this is something that I 
I can see that is important to talk about. And so while it doesn't really come from me personally, I, I understand that it does from a lot of other people. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I appreciate you were willing to take, take that on. Um, yeah. Thanks Tommy for sharing that. And Colin, what, where'd you get this story? So, I mean, it's kind of weird. I always have these like crazy ideas I have with friends all the time, or we would literally just go up to each other in the hallway, say one sentence of something completely bizarre. And then I would just write it down on a post-it note. And that was one of those post-it notes of this delivery service that just delivers your package before you even like know what you want. And then it coming in handy later. Um, it was just kind of one of those ideas. And I, uh, this was for an assignment uh, through school that I needed to, I, I had to make a, a film for. And um, I was just kind of figuring out what I wanted to do. And I found this post-it note and I was like, that's kind of fun. Let's build a story out of it. And um, so, yeah, I did. And I fully wrote it out with um, two of my friends who I give a lot of credit for because this story wouldn't have been anything without them. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much how it came down. There's really no big story to it. It's just a post-it note. Mm -hmm. So simple yet so profound. <laughs> and Francis, yeah, let's talk about this meta writing about writing process. Where that come from? All right. So like uh, like Colin's thing, this was made for an assignment at school. Shout out so school. Every, huh? <laughs> I was just saying shout out to school. Yeah, shout out to school for uh, making me come up with last minute film ideas. Uh, so anyway, um, so every year we have this thing at school called us, um, Exhibition Night where we showcase all of our final projects. And uh, I had like nothing for this particular class, which was a storytelling class. Uh, like I said, just like how to tell stories in a prose format, sort of like moth type thing. Uh, so I panicked, uh, recorded, animated, and uh, edited the audio in two days. Actually, my brother ed edited the uh, video because I had no editing skills back then. Uh, so I did that all in two days. And uh, yeah, it really shows in my opinion but at least i mean from what i hear people think that it's really funny everyone that i show it to like seems to really like it so i guess that's what matters uh but yeah that's honestly that's really about it i guess i could like explain certain things in the thing like uh i say there's like a line where i'm like saying like how i miss a teacher that teacher got fired uh, due to the fact that he actually cared about the students. Uh, I don't know. This The school I go to is whack. Uh, but yeah, Tony, he sadly, uh, he sadly left. Uh, anyway, yeah, that that's really about it. I, I literally have nothing else to say uh, about this. Yeah. Yeah, well, I really appreciate you sharing that and, and being candid about that back background story. Um, yeah, I mean, when I watched all of your films, there is, you know, a kind of, uh, you know, with that context in mind. Um, yeah, how do you see the narratives in your films maybe speaking to, um, maybe not necessarily like in all of your cases, but I'm thinking like political purposes or kind of being an advocate for, um, you know, uh, advocate for either underrepresented stories um, or even maybe tensions between people in society that we might not always talk about. And Colin, I'm kind of thinking about you know, this, the, the relationship between these neighbors, you know, and then Tommy, you have, you know, this, this uh, character who's really dealing with something heavy that they aren't really able to 
share with everyone else. It's a really kind of um, insular experience um, that you're able to expose through this story and, and through these really beautiful scenes. And Francis, you know, you, you're talking about um, it, inserting these these kind of uh, little like yeah, uh, like inserting these. these and like learning how to tell them in a powerful way, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, and also this sense of like editing um, and um, conciseness, and so yeah, like I I would love to hear from Tommy and Colin as well about yeah, what is it like to kind of and I may be just totally misinterpreting or thinking <laughs> that you're doing something that you're not, but like, what's it like to kind of, um, yeah, share narratives and have that kind of responsibility or even maybe put a, a certain amount of playfulness to it or sincerity or, you know, you, you approach things with a very different tone, but I'd love to hear, yeah, how you f focused those ideas and emotions or t social tensions too. Yeah, so I think something that really helped me focus my story, uh, not so much during the writing process, but during production was the fact that it was very, very cold outside. So I we filmed this during uh, like the winter, it was like January and February. We were out, obviously, um, if you've seen the film, we were out on a lake and so it was absolutely freezing and it was like towards like later in the day and so i think that really helped us kind of not because we weren't we weren't super like all right we're out here in the cold and we're gonna get this done we were we were struggling to to push through it because it was um there were there were days where it was close to freezing and, and everything. And so I think that kind of brought us down to like grounding us almost. And so we were like, all right, this is really serious. And we have to, we have to tell this story. And despite everything that's going on around us, we, we know that we have to do this. And we, we understand that while we're filming this, we might be really cold, but other people are dealing with issues that are so much bigger and that's what this story is about and um i think that is really a credit to my cast they were really really committed almost at some points more committed than i was to really making this as as um as well made as it as it could possibly be and so i think um the weather and the environments and the overall cinematography, um, co color choices, um, going colder on the color choices, really helped um, focus that that energy um, on the the seriousness. Thank you. And yeah, you and who is what is your actress's name again? Her name is Jocelyn Dummert. Uh, she might be watching right now. Shout out, Jocelyn. You're amazing. Um, and then also Hannah Ramsey was um, my third actress that was in it. And also I had another crew member, Andrea, Andrea Lagaki. And so I'm forever grateful to them for taking on this project with me. Yeah, you all did a gorgeous job. Yeah, shout out, Jocelyn. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, Colin, what do you think? Um, so kind of very different from Tommy's, um, my, my film, uh, really the one thing that I kind of had in mind was, um, at least I saw there was like, um, other people kind of working on a project like this and even like young filmmakers, like how I hear a lot of people trying to wrap their head around this, like huge, like concept for their film and so make it like very complicated, very, and all this. And I think the one thing with my film that, um, I know a lot of uh, that I got a lot of appreciation for was how simple it was yet how engaging of a story it is. So I think that's the one thing I kind of wanted to um, kind of put out there is that, you know, a simple story can go a long way. Uh, but um, it's also just a very playful kind of um, like plot. Like it's kind of ridiculous, but it's almost this like serious yet kind of sarcastic tone 
which was very fun to play around with. And um, I think that also really helped set the mood. Uh, it was just very fun to make all around. And yeah, Charlie Hartenstein and JJ Bushman, incredible. JJ was the one playing the neighbor. Just they're they're both incredible. So a lot of credit goes to them. Yes, yes, they were amazing. Uh, once again, incredible cast and crew. And also like uh, the fact that you're featuring these experiences that everybody's like doing every day in this kind of spooky but funny way it made it all the more surreal as a viewer <laughs> um so yeah appreciate that what is next for everybody all of you talented people oh i actually do have a project going on so uh, i am trying to create a pilot for the series that i'm working on i have a script like all typed out i still need some edits but like yeah, I want to try and pitch this to like a network or something. Uh, yeah, it's literally just it's pretty simple plot, just like three people apartment. One of them is just insane and just like destroys the entire area. And uh, the others try to stop them. That's it. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, I got a bunch of other like tiny projects. I finished uh, I finished a couple of uh, college assignments and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what I got going on so far. Also, like a couple of mini animations as well. Nice. I don't know what anything that's like. Uh, most of them are like better than what I submitted. So maybe I might submit another thing in next year or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah. I can go. Um. Mm -hmm. So I'm also currently working on a project. Um, I don't want to say too much about it, but it, um, we just finished writing and we'll be in production very shortly. Um, I'll just say this as simply as possible. It's just about this guy who can't control his left arm. It's just not in like a way that's like the left arm has a mind of its own. Oh, and he's like just has to do it. A little it's bit, like, but a little yeah. more comedic so i'm very excited for that one and i think it's gonna be really cool nice yeah i'm actually that sounds pretty funny actually <laughs> yeah so um i'm currently writing a script for a sort of a black swan type kind of uh film um so that's that's kind of as much about it as i know right now um because i'm very early in the writing process but um i'm really excited about that because i think it i really like doing very serious films and i think that um it will uh definitely fit that mold for me and so i'm working on that as part of my um, applications for film schools that'll be coming up for me in the fall so i'm a junior right now so this summer is going to be full of writing and production and everything for um yeah for my film school application so I'm, I'm very excited to get into that process and start furthering um my involvement in in festivals and other real world film opportunities yes absolutely well it's a thrill that we get to have your films in our festival this year. And as you said, Tommy, definitely all of you should be submitting your films to all as many festivals as you can. Um, I'm just really impressed and appreciative um, of your work and the fact that you could share it with us for this festival really means a lot. So thank you so much and I wish you all the best. I'm so excited to see your next films. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, and I have last but not least one more very special guest, uh, Jessica Rodriguez from the film Table for Two. Yes, Jessica, it's Hi. you and me. Yes, it is. <laughs> this is our Table for Two. Yes, incredible. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a huge fan of your film. 
your films in general. I really loved, um, you had a music video kind of thing in our yeah. festival last year, I think, or two years ago. Yeah. Um, I just love that you have such a unique aesthetic. Um, it's kind of unrecognizable or unrecognizable. It's very recognizable. It's unmistakable. That's the word, <laughs> not unrecognizable, but yeah, it's unmistakably you, uh, even though, you know, your films are very different. Um, and I think that's really special. Um, especially for a, you know, a filmmaker in high school, where do you draw your inspiration from? And let me backtrack and please ask you to do my standard questions of what school you go to and, uh, and a brief synopsis of your film. And then, yes, I'd love to hear more about where you get your inspo. Um, so I go to Veritas High School and my film is about two people having dinner and it just leads to an argument. Um, as for inspiration, I'm really into art just in general. So anything that I think looks really pretty in terms of like colors and like patterns and stuff like that, I it draws my attention and I usually tend to just work on things that involve like patterns and stuff like that, mm. yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. And it's really neat to see how you've kind of gone from, in your music video a few years ago, you had um, this really cool kind of digital collage effect. And now you've got um, full on puppets. It's, it's very more hands-on or sort of, yeah, physical tactile objects that you're manipulating and creating this sort of tableau, different layers. It's so cool. Um, what made you decide to use those media, I guess? Is this a, a new thing for you that you're exploring? Uh, yeah. So this film is the result of a, you guessed it, a class project. <laughs> yes. Thank you so, teachers for assigning yes. things. <laughs> uh, so basically because of COVID, we weren't at school and we weren't able to use what we usually could at school. So I had to try to figure out how to make a film using what I have, which was a really bad phone camera and literally anything in my room. And that happened to be these two head masks and all. Um, what was the question? <laughs> oh yeah, so it sounds like, yeah, you're using things that are more kind of in your house, you're not, you're not would you, do you think you would have used more like digital manipulation of stuff if you had kind of been in a different, if you had like a different kind of like access to those editing equipment or, or, are, you, or are you really like excited to explore the, yeah, the physical kind of objects around you these days? I think that just having like props and things to interact with really helps to stimulate your eyes so yeah. yeah I really liked that so it was something new and hopefully if I'm given a chance like this again I'll work on stuff like this with objects <laughs> that's very cool um when I was watching because you know back pre pre stay at home days um yeah, you're just able to kind of be out in public a lot more. Um, I don't know uh, if going out to dinner was like a regular thing for you, but I'm so curious to hear where you got the uh, the inspiration for this script, the conversation between Penelope and her Leonard. Leonard, yes. <laughs> my God. My God. Oh. Oh. I can keep asking a question or just keep talking. I will tell the audience while um, Jessica is busy uh, at the moment that, um, yeah, there's a conversation between Leonard and Penelope that is so true to life that it kind of blew me away. So I can't wait to hear um, when she's able. <laughs> oh my gosh, who is this? Where is she at? <laughs> Yeah, you can, you can stay in. Yeah, I mean, if if that's if that works better for you. Hi, who's this? 
Um, so, <laughs> is this your brother? Um, my nephew. Your nephew. Um, <laughs> so, are you um, a filmmaker too? <laughs> uh, basically. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> this is amazing. Hello. Bye. Okay. Well, this is very cool. Maybe I'll see if there are questions from the audience, <laughs> if you could put in a question. Um. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we lost. Um. <laughs> we. Oh, she's back. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was really great. Um, we have some comments uh, from YouTube that I can read. We have, uh, Hi. Uh, oh, that's okay. I loved the cameo, the family cameo. We got a fun uh, squinty smiley from Maddie. Thank oh, you man. for Maddie. And incredible filmmaking talent in Milwaukee. All the best to the young creators. Keep it going. Uh, oh, and I'm dynamite as a facilitator. Who said that? And <laughs> thank you, that's very kind. And these things happen, hashtag family life. That's very cute. Thank you all for hanging out. Um, Jessica, what's up? Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, thanks for coming back. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. That's, um, so let's just take a moment to collect ourselves. And that's this was your nephew. Yes. Uh, how I think we were talking about um, where you got this inspiration for Penelope and Leonard's conversation, which to me could have been plucked straight out of a restaurant, perhaps from my own life. I mean, do you relate to Penelope? Let's yeah, just tell me all about it. I'm so curious. Um. So basically. During COVID, um, my brain sucked and it started kind of, yeah. Um, so basically, uh, I want to pursue art and um, there's another voice in the back of my head just saying, are you sure? Like, are you even good enough for that? So I kind of wanted to personify those two feelings into characters and that's that. It was so the verisimilitude. It felt very real, um, and I, you know, that's really fascinating to hear that that was sort of two two sides of your own inner dialogue. Um, I can definitely relate, and I and I read it as when I viewed it, I totally assumed that this was these were two separate um, people. But that's which you you know you might expect to kind of see out there in the world this kind of actual dynamic of partners who just don't aren't on the same page with their lifestyle so yeah that's that's really remarkable and where are you at i guess with um who are you listening to more i guess these days i guess penelope <laughs> yes that's what hey. i like <laughs> penelope one <laughs> yes. That's really great. Um, what are your What are your dreams and goals in art? Are you thinking of sticking with filmmaking or st multimedia stuff? Um, I'm kind of still undecided on to what I want to do. Uh, I'm going to be attending my ad this fall, so Yay. hopefully, yeah. Uh, Hopefully I'm able to figure out what it is exactly that I want to do there. But right now I'm kind of leaning towards maybe illustration or design. And as for whether or not I'll continue to make these films, maybe if I'm forced into it or if I feel like these first of inspiration, maybe. Oh my gosh. Well, maybe I can just um, shout in you know, whatever that street is called next to my ad, I'll just be like, Jessica, make a film. 
<laughs> this weekend. <laughs> no, I yeah, it's been such a delight to see your work um, through this festival. Um, and while I'm slightly disappointed to hear that you're not full on pursuing film, um, <laughs> because I yeah, don't be at all. I mean, I'm just saying that your work has brought so much um, joy and, and life to, you know, the just the work that I get to see um, by helping to kind of put this program together. So it's really an honor to talk to you. Um, yeah, and so I guess, uh, are there any artists that particularly have been inspiring you these days um, that you, you'll kind of be keeping close while you're at my ad? Um, I grab a lot of inspiration from a lot of different stuff, like from music mm -hmm. and from films and animation and just a lot of stuff. I think that mainly there's this one artist called Vuen that I really like. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll probably keep tabs on her and look at her as kind of like a god, I guess. Yeah. How do you spell Vune? V-E-W-N. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. We'll be looking that up for sure. And we'll be looking up your name, I'm sure, um, in the coming years. <laughs> Don't look scared. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I can't even tell you how thrilled I am that you're going to my ad and that you're going to be continuing to be an artist and that the Penelope in your mind won over Leonard. I, it just brings me so much joy. I'm so proud of you and, and grateful that we have your film in our festival this year to kind of cap off your high school experience and, and you're partaking in Milwaukee youth show. So do you have any words of, wisdom, um, you know, since you're about to step out of, uh, you know, this world and into my ad world. Um, yeah. Uh, any, any art advice to creative people out there before we cap off the end the evening? I mean, the afternoon, I guess. I guess just keep looking at things that you like a lot and try to implement that stuff into your work. Um, also, don't listen to what your brain is saying. Just do whatever your hands want to do, I guess, whether that be holding a camera or painting or writing or whatever. Um, I guess just stay chill for the most part and you'll get through whatever it is that is going on. I love that. Thank you so that much. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. Um, thank you. And yes, Jessica, I hate to say goodbye. I really do. <laughs> we should go on Restream and just talk about art for another hour. But no, I really appreciate you joining us today. And thank you so much again for your insights and for your creative work. It's really been a delight. Thank you. It was nice talking to you and uh, it was nice hearing everyone else talk. I think that was very insightful. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Um, so uh, before we end the, the day, yes, as Jessica said, it's been a real pleasure. And so, as she said, insightful and intriguing and fun to talk to all of these filmmakers. So thank you again to everybody who joined us. Um, and please check out the Milwaukee Youth Show. If you haven't yet, you will not regret. It is just a beautiful splash of, of incredible films. Um, and a few of these filmmakers, quite a few actually, um, have been taking part in different filmmaking programs around the city, including the Milwaukee Film High School Filmmaking Course so I just want to give a shout out to Ian Cessna, the uh, instructor for that course, um, and to anybody who's interested in applying for our high school filmmaking course, I highly encourage you to look for applications. Um, 
later this summer around August. Um, we would love to hear from you if you're interested in another out of school time program, but there's so many incredible ones out there, including Milwaukee Visionaries Project and out Artworks. And again, shout out to all the uh, amazing film teachers who gave your students uh, these assignments that they really rose to the occasion too. So um, yeah, thank you to the educators. Thank you to mentors, family members, um, and everybody who supported these filmmakers uh, throughout this really challenging year. So yeah, with that, thank you so much. Become a member and uh, help us with the double up, all that good stuff. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye.